Molly Maynard has lived in Kingston for nearly 30 years. But last year, the Aboriginal elder and aged pensioner was forced out of the area due to skyrocketing rents. Well, it was degrading. It was, um, I just felt so empty. Homeless for eight months, the 74-year-old had to move in with his daughter and her family. Oh, yeah. We're looking, trying to find houses, just can't get them. Not even Aboriginal houses. Can't get them, mate. There's just nothing about. So I've had patients of mine who've been patients of mine for 30 years, long-term residents of Kingborough, but they can't find anywhere to go. So they are doing a sort of couch surfing as whole families. Dr Claire Smith has just retired after three decades as a general practitioner in Kingborough. So the thing that's radically new in the last few years is the climate refugees. They don't want to live in and can't afford to live in Melbourne or Sydney or really big centres and they look around and they think where would be a great place to live in this warming world? Oh, Tasmania looks fantastic. That growing demand for housing is seeing a surge of new builds in the area. In the last 10 years, Kingborough Council has approved more than 2,200 new dwellings. And there's more than 1,000 new dwellings in the pipeline for the next decade. 80 of them are in the heart of Kingston on the old high school site. So this is the King's Quarter development. Um, it's a new master plan community located right in the centre of Kingston. And our first stage, which we've just started construction on, comprises of 80 freestanding homes and townhomes. And our future stages comprise retail and commercial use. As well as King's Quarter, there's the 83 hectare Whitewater Park development with over 230 potential properties and another 100 lots to come online. Next door, Spring Farm is around 60 hectares, divided up into 390 lots so far with another 40 to come. In nearby Blackmans Bay, there's Mary Knoll Estate, where 30 lots have just been given the green light for social housing. But the biggest of them all is in Huntingfield, which would introduce another 470 lots. In total, that's five large-scale developments underway in the area. Matt Jones lives next door to Huntingfield. He's always known it would be developed, but is concerned about the scale of what's being proposed by the state government. So I think there's about 207 residential properties in, in Huntingfield at the moment. And with 470 lots coming on board, it could potentially be 800 to 1,000 dwellings on this piece of land. So it's basically effectively building a whole new community, a whole new suburb. Originally, 230 lots were planned for the site, but because of how the land has been rezoned, lot sizes are different to those typically seen in the Kingborough area. The chances of overdevelopment of this site is extremely high. It hasn't got the roads, it hasn't got the stormwater, it hasn't got the services, it hasn't got the schools, it hasn't got basic infrastructure for the development of this size to work. The state government insists lot sizes are comparable to other recent nearby subdivisions. Public comment on stage one of the development application is expected to open next month. Real estate agent Andrew Henry is busier than ever. Whitewater Park, for instance, especially, we were opening a stage up for two weeks. We'd sell the whole stage and then we'd just wait for the next stage to be released and open it up. Two weeks and be gone. The demand is huge. But a growing population isn't without its growing pains. Health and medical facilities are already stretched. There's only a handful of schools and there's still no dedicated 24-7 police and emergency services hub. Traffic is another major concern for residents. It's Friday afternoon and Anya Boot is doing the school run to collect her teenage daughter. I'm committing myself to over an hour of being in the car. There's only one road for traffic at the Taramar Steiner School and the neighbouring St Aloysius Catholic College. Hey, how was your day? It's like this every day. And the thing is, this is the traffic with only two schools and a little bit of traffic from the development here and the industrial park, which is just over there. I simply don't see how the infrastructure that's here can cope 
with what's proposed. The Kingborough Council knows it's got some work to do. What we're doing is trying to make sure that whatever's built there is appropriate and if you put a lot of residents in that area you need to look after them. So we need the schools, we need the health care and we need to be able to commute in that area. Balancing growth and basic living needs of residents, a big challenge ahead for Kingborough's next mayor. Two, three. <laughs> Something's got to be done because these rent prices are just way out of the bounds of people and they're starving. People are starving. I'm all for more social and affordable housing. We need it. And we've got a shortage. You get one shot at getting this right and once it's built, it's built.